Welcome back to our series on intellectual property law, where we're talking about the law in the context of legal English learning. We've already talked about patents, and now we're moving into trademarks. Trademarks are an incredibly valuable and important area of the law, and I'll speak with you about some of the important concepts and theories associated. But first, my name is Jeff Kaiser, and I've been a lawyer for 15 years, but more importantly, I've been teaching legal English around the world and helping lawyers speaking dozens of languages use English more in their practice. My goal is always to help people feel more confident in their use of English in their work life and maybe in their personal life too. But I think that we can use our words in English especially, to help form our arguments and make our, our work product even better. So to start with, let's talk about trademarks. What is a trademark? And what is trademark law? Trademark law governs the use of a device. And when I say device, I mean a word or a phrase, a symbol, even a product shape or a logo. Uh, owned by a manufacturer or a merchant to identify its goods and distinguish them from others. They are the hourglass shape of a Coca-Cola bottle. They are the swoosh on a Nike shoe. We see trademarks every day. Every product we buy, largely, will come with packaging and or words or logos designed to to say what it is. Uh, we tend to buy a, not just a Bluetooth speaker, but maybe a Bose Bluetooth speaker or a name brand. These are important. I, I, I can't stress how important they are. And I think anybody that buys things understands that. By making these goods easier to identify, whether it's the shape of a Coca-Cola bottle, whether it's the, the Nike shoe, uh, it gives the manufacturers a real incentive to make quality products. If, if you or I were to go buy a Coke and it tasted bad, we wouldn't buy it again. And that logo, that red color, that hourglass shape of the bottle, would make it easy for us to avoid it in the future. What they hope, what the, what the manufacturers hope is the other side of things. That we see that, that logo, that, that, that special font that Coca-Cola uses, that bottle, and it makes us want to buy more of it. That's the goal here. And protecting these rights is very important. A derivative work. This is a vocabulary phrase that is important in IP work. And we'll talk about it in, in, in detail more in a later video. But I wanted you to start thinking about what happens when we have an adaptation of a work. Let's say, let's say that uh, J.K. Rowling, she wrote the Harry Potter universe. But she sold her IP or licensed her IP to a movie studio to make the movies. Once she gives that up, that movie studio, they now own the rights to make the derivative work. Now, I have not read those contracts and I am sure that they are very interesting. So that example may not work in the real world. But when we make a derivative work, it creates a separate layer of intellectual property that still deserves protection. So where does trademark law come from? Trademarks are governed by both state and federal law in the United States. Originally, uh, common law, simple jurisprudence, case law, was the main source of protection for trademarks. But over time, that has evolved. 
In the late 1800s, the United States Congress enacted the first federal trademark law. And since then, it has been expanded and developed. It, while, while, while it was once a simple document, it is now an incredibly long and complex statute. It's been most recently amended in 1996, but, but, but trademark law is based in federal statutes, at least within the United States. Federal law now provides the, the primary source of law for trademarks throughout the country. There, there might be a little bit of state law that could protect you as well, but we're going to focus on federal law because it's really the, the most universal and it's the one that, that mirrors most international trademark law as well. So trademarks, we, I've thrown a few at you already, but we can look at them in terms of brand names like Apple or McDonald's or even Dolce & Gabbana, product names like the iPod or a Big Mac. Uh, words in a stylized font like coca-cola like i've mentioned earlier or ebay a jingle like mcdonald's i'm loving it um, or symbols and we see we see these symbols every day think about the hood ornament on a mercedes why are why are trademarks so important well today Google has been ranked as the most valuable trademark trademark on the planet. $44 billion. That's a staggering amount of money. Companies like Apple or Microsoft or IBM or hundreds or thousands, maybe millions of other companies and products, trademarks are valuable to them. Now, there might not be $44 billion valuable, but for a smaller company, that doesn't matter. This trademark is what allows a consumer to differentiate them from other companies. So, a license or an assign. You could say an assign or an assignment. To license, you're simply giving somebody permission to use your intellectual property under specific terms and conditions. There might be royalties involved in a license. An assignment, on the other hand, is any transfer of IP ownership from one party to another. You can simply give it away if you want. Now, trademarks have symbols. We have seen these little circles with a TM or a superscript TM on products that we use every day. If you look at your, your box of orange juice in the refrigerator, I bet you can find a trademark. An SM is a service mark, and that's a little bit more rare to find. The, the R with a circle around it is important because that means it's registered. We'll talk a little bit more about registration in a later video, but that's what gives you the power to protect your intellectual property in court. These symbols represent that the company, the manufacturer or the seller, is asserting a trademark on, on their logo or their mark. Um, and, and it means that, that we should be careful if we try to use them in, in any special way. Now, when you use it, just because you throw the TM on your logo does not necessarily mean that it's protected. Legal protection is only guaranteed with the register, registered mark, that circle with an R in the middle. To obtain that mark, you need to, you need to register the mark with the United States Patent and Trademark Office which is often shortened to the USPTO. And if you're doing that, you may want to talk to a specialized trademark attorney to help you with that process. Okay, that's it for this one on the trademarks. 
we're going to keep moving forward and talk about the different kinds of trademarks available to you in our next video. Stay tuned. I'll be right back.